Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sharif Al-Gamal and today I'm with you in uh, a new video about reinforced concrete design. Within this video, we'll be learning about the flexural modes of failure of reinforced concrete sections. And we will know about a compression failure, the balanced failure and the tension failure in reinforced concrete rectangular sections. If we have a beam under concentrated loads like this, this will result in a compression force at the top face of the beam and tension force in the bottom face of the beam where we usually have tensile steel reinforcement. And if we take a section at the middle of the beam, we will see that we have a compression forces at the top called FCC. And we have a tension force at the level of the tension steel called FST. The distance between the two forces is called Z or this is the lever arm. From equilibrium, we can know that FCC equal to the FST, the compression equal to the tension. And if we want to calculate the capacity of that section, it will be FCC times Z or FST times Z. And we learned this in a previous video. Okay, for such beams, what will be the types of failures at the mid span here? We may have three different types of failures. The first one, if we have a failure in the concrete, this it means the top surface of the middle section, uh, this we will call compression failure. It will be a failure in the concrete side where we have a compression forces and therefore we call it compression failure and it occurs in the concrete. On the opposite side, if we have the tension uh, failure, it means a failure in the steel bars. Uh, this we call it tension failure because it occurs in the bottom side of the beam where we have a tension failure. So we have a compression failure in the concrete or we may have a tension failure in the steel or we may have something called balanced failure where we have the concrete and the steel will reach their ultimate strength at the same time. Let's go and take one by one to see the difference between each type of the three failures. And we are going to start with the balanced failure. For the balanced failure, as I just explained, it occurs in the concrete and in the steel at the same time. So the concrete and the steel fail simultaneously. What does this mean? It means the concrete will reach its ultimate strength and also the steel will reach its yield strength and they will, both of them will reach this, their ultimate strength and yield strength at the same time. So this is, will result in a problem because this failure is a catastrophic failure without warning. We know that the concrete is a brittle material which fail suddenly. And if we have a failure in the concrete, crushing of the concrete, it means it will be a sudden failure and we don't have warning. Therefore, this type of failure should be avoided. When we design a reinforced concrete flexural member, we should avoid having a balanced failure. Let's go to the second type, which is the compression failure. The compression failure is, occurs in the compression side where we have concrete. So the concrete fails before the steel yielding. In this case, the concrete will reach ultimate strain and ultimate strength before the steel reaches its yield strength. And for that one, we call it over reinforced section because we have a steel more than the steel used in the balanced section. Therefore, it is called over reinforced section and again this failure is also catastrophic without any warning even it is uh, worse than the balanced failure because we don't have any yielding of the steel only failure or crushing of the concrete which which happens suddenly and therefore there is no warning and again we should be careful here and this failure should be avoided when we design a reinforced concrete flexural member according to different codes. So when you design a flexural members, don't design it to fail in the compression side or in the concrete side, and don't design it to be a compression failure. The third type of failure is the tension failure. Tension failure, it occurs in the tension side where we have a steel because the steel is 
we use it to resist the tensile forces mainly. So in this case, the steel yields before concrete reaches its maximum strength. The steel will yield where the concrete will still less than the ultimate strength or the maximum strength. And therefore, this section is called under reinforced sections because we are using less steel compared to the balanced section. So it is called under reinforced section. This section is a good section because, or a good failure because the ductile, it is a ductile failure that takes place gradually. We know that the steel is a ductile material. When it yields, it has elongation and it will not uh, rupture suddenly. It will have a lot of warning, a good warning before the final collapse of the structure. So therefore, this type of failure is recommended by different codes. So when you design a reinforced concrete flexural member, we should ensure that this section, if it will fail, it will fail due to a tension failure, not a compression failure and not a balanced failure. Let's now learn more about how to calculate for these balanced failures and tension and compression failures. If we have a rectangular section with an effective depth from the compression side to the center line of the tension steel equals D and a width called B, as we learned in our previous videos, the strain will be always linear strain distribution. The strain in the concrete called epsilon CC, the strain in the tension steel called epsilon ST, the distance from the compression side to the neutral axis, we call it S. And this is showing the stress distribution, the maximum stress distribution, the maximum stress, compressive stress forces is 0.45 FCU. And this distance of the compression block equals S equals to 0.9 X. Of course, this value and this value of the S and the stress here is according to the BS code, but we can use the same concept for the ACI code or Euro code or any other code. The change will be only in the value of the stress here and the value of the S, but the same concept will be uh, uh, similar in all uh, different codes. Let's now uh, use the strain distributions and make similarity of triangles. So we can say epsilon CC divided by epsilon ST equals X divided by this distance, which is D minus X. So this is the first equation. And let's rearrange this equation and get X over D. So the X over D equals epsilon CC divided by epsilon CC plus epsilon ST. Now, for a balanced failure, we know that the uh, concrete will reach its ultimate uh, strains, which means epsilon CC will be 0 0.0035 according to the BS code. And at the same time, the steel will reach its yield strain. So epsilon ST will be equals to epsilon yield, which is 0.95 FE yield divided by the modulus or assisty of the steel. Let's substitute these values into this equation here. So epsilon CC will be 0 0.0035, epsilon ST will be 0.95 FE yield divided by ES. And by doing that and just rearranging the equation, we'll find that X over D equals 700 divided by 700 plus 0.95 FE yield, or we can get X as a ratio from D, the X equal 700 divided by 700 plus 0 0.95 FE yield multiplied by D. So this X, if we want to calculate the X as a ratio of the effective depths, we can get it from this equation. Based on the type of the steel, the FE yield, if we are using a high yield steel with FE yield 460 and substituting this into this equation, we can get the X equals 0 0.615 D. So this X, is the X balanced. If the X calculated equal 0.615 D in a case of a field 460, it means we will have a balanced failure. It means the concrete will crush. Meanwhile, the steel will reach its yield uh, strain. So if X equal 0.615 D, it means X equal to X balanced. The steel will yield and the concrete will crush and this will be a balanced failure. Let's continue with the balanced failure and calculate the value FCC and FST. 
the value of FCC here, the compression force equals the volume of this uh, shape here. So it equals the stress multiplied by the area. So the stress is 0.45 FCU multiplied by the width of the beam multiplied by S, which is 0.9X. So let's rearrange this and we'll reach that FCC equals 0.405 FCU times B times X. Also, we get the force in the tension steel, FST equals 0.95 F yield, which is the maximum stress or yield stress for the steel, 0.95 because of the material safety factor as explained in our previous videos, multiplied by AST. So it is a stress multiplied by area. Now let's say equating the two values, the submission of forces in the X direction equals zero. So the FCC equals to FST and rearrange. We can get the area steel equals 0.405 FCUB times X divided by 0.95 times F yield. And from this equation, we can see that the area steel is proportional with the value of X. Area steel is proportional with uh, the value of X. If you have more steel, the X will be more. If you have less steel, the X will be less. Now for a balanced failure with F yield equal 460 Newton per millimeter square or megapascal, we know that X equals 0.615 D. We just did that in our previous slide like few minutes ago. So let's substitute this equation or the X into this equation here. So we can get the area steel in a balanced section. The area steel that will result in a balanced section. So we just replace the X by 0.615 D and let's uh, simplify the equation. So it will be 5.7 times 10 to power minus four FCU times BD. So if the area steel equal to that value, it means we will have a balanced failure. If we want to get the reinforcement ratio, the reinforcement ratio equals the area of the steel divided by the area of the concrete, which is B times effective depth D. So by doing that, we will remove the B times D. So we will reach this value here. And for an example, let's substitute the FCU. We use any value. So if we use FCU equals 30, megapascal, we can get the row balance in this case equals 0.0171. Or if we want it as a percent, it will be 1.7%. So if the F yield is 460 and concrete is 30 megapascal, the row balance is about 1.7%. When you design for a rectangular section or a beam under flexure, so ensure that the row will be less than this row balance to have a tension failure. So a reinforcement ratio of 1% will be fine. 0 0.8, 1.1, 1.2% will be less than the row balance to ensure that you will not have a compression failure or a balanced failure. Now let's see the difference between the balanced failure and the tension failure. These are the strains in a balanced failure. Epsilon yield in the steel, and epsilon Cu in the concrete. In a tension failure, we know that the steel will reach the yield strain. However, the concrete will not reach the maximum strain, which, which it means it will be a value lower than 0 0.0035. So the strain distribution will be this shape. Here, the strain is less than 0 0.0035, and the steel will reach the yield strain. Therefore, the X in this case will be less than X balance. So in attention failure, the X will be less than X balanced. It means less than 0.615 D. And also the reinforcement ratio will be less than the row balanced. And we call this section is an under reinforced section. That uh, the BS code recommends that X should be less than or equal to 0.5 D. Means less than 0.615 D. Why this difference? Just to ensure that we will have a tension failure. We don't want to be close to the balanced failure. So to ensure that we will have a tension failure, we will take X less than or equals to 0.5D, which is lower than the point <clears throat> 0.615D, okay? 
And as I explained earlier, this failure or the tension failure is a ductile failure that takes place gradually. The structure will undergo very large deflections and rotations before the final collapse. And therefore, it is recommended failure mode by different design codes. Okay, so in reinforced concrete structures, the recommended failure mode of beams or slabs or flexural member is the tension failure because it is a ductile failure and gives warning before the final collapse of the structure. Let's continue with the compression failure. The compression failure, the concrete will reach the maximum strains, 0.0035. However, the steel will be less than the epsilon yield. So the strain distribution will be like that. The strain in the steel is less than the epsilon yield, and therefore the X will be greater than X balanced. So if the X is greater than X balanced, which is 0.615 D, the row will be greater than row balanced, and it called over reinforced section. And for that uh, section, it will be a compression failure. For that one, the failure occurs in uh, concrete by crushing of the concrete where the steel did not yield. And it is a catastrophic failure without any warning. And therefore it is unrecommended failure and should be avoided uh, by different design codes. So let's conclude this video. We have three different types of failure, tension failure, compression failure, and balanced failure. The recommended failure is the tension failure and uh, balanced and compression failure are not recommended. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share the video with others. Thank you for watching and seeing you in a coming video and goodbye.